has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I got to tell you, uh, Carver High, between uh, in-game live all access with the prime minister on Saturday and Pharrell and events.com, like between the two of them, I mean, I was on the air with him for four hours and we were hitting games. I mean, like I can hit free throws. I mean, it was literally, it, it was unbelievable how many games we hit. Don't get me started on Saturday, what I did in college football, banging winners. I mean, and they were crazy games, too. The ones I already spoke of, the the Tennessee game with Pitt was as good as it gets. That game was crazy. I had no business winning that game by seven. And and it went to overtime. And usually you win by six, right? But they scored first and got the field goal. That was the key to that bet. And then the Texas Tech bet. And then I hit a bunch of small ones. But then the late night ones, the Mississippi State hit, the Oklahoma State yeah. hit uh, against uh, – Arizona State. There were so many games uh, that I went crazy on. It was just beautiful. Sunday was hard. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah. And these NFL games are a nasty way to lose your temper and your money. They certainly are. Uh, late Saturday night was great for me. The bailout blowout, as I like to call it. Uh, BYU. Mississippi State. Mississippi State was probably my favorite uh, college play of the entire week. Uh, late night out there in Tucson. They're good. Uh, the, Beaver, the Beavers got it done for me in Fresno. Uh, Oak State as well against Arizona State. So that was a good one. I did have Baylor, so that was no good for me. As That was some game. If you could have stayed up on the East Coast right. till 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning, uh, that was some double overtime game between BYU and Baylor. <laughs> BYU could have won that game twice. Uh, well, the, yes. the second time they yes. did. The first time the kid hit, hit missed the field goal. So uh, that was a big bet for me, too. But I lost that so, Fresno game. Now, that game, it was a late touchdown that won it for Oregon yeah. State, right? Like, so a late yeah. score, very late in the game. So I lost on that bet. I mean, obviously, I lose bets. Uh, but that, that one burned me. But uh, I hit the BYU game. So many missed field goals between Saturday and Sunday, uh, college and NFL. You got to have a good kicker. Wild. You you raise your kid to be a kicker. He'll make a lot of money now. <laughs> Let me blast through a couple of these other college games with you. Uh, Kentucky goes to the Swamp, beats the Gators 26-16. to 16. So a week after everybody anointing Anthony Richardson uh, as the next one, a uh, Heisman candidate, yada, 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 did not play well against the Wildcats. In fact, uh, Kedron Smith took him yard, Scotty, with a pick six on ESPN to give Kentucky the lead for good. Empty look for Richardson. Oh, that is danger! Oh, my! Kedron Smith cuts inside, and he's got to pick six it in the swamp. Cat scratch fever, Smith! Uh, so that's two in a row for Stoops over Florida, yep. and Stoops, like, all time now in Lexington. Uh, his 10 years there, he's broken a record. He's the all-time winner there now, I think. So he's done a hell of a job with Kentucky from literally the outhouse to the penthouse. They actually have a football program now that matters. Yeah, you can actually say that they are in. Now, look, they're not in the Alabama, Georgia, LSU, you know, stratosphere of names, but they're in the upper half now of the SEC in terms of Without a doubt. respectable football programs, and Stoops has done a good job there. Let me run through some of these other ones. Miami beat Southern Miss with a big second half. They sweated in the first, but Southern Miss covered the 26 and a half with the 30 to 7. <laughs> I know they did, and I got to tell you, that game, I, 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 when it was in the morning and it, it came down to that 26 and a hook, I was so into Southern Miss. I didn't make the bet, yeah. but uh, the I Canes know. got it done. Now, and we welcome all of our radio affiliates, Sirius, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have you with us. We're raging here. So, you know, get on board and ride with us like you do. So here's the deal. Miami goes to College Station this week yeah. to play the Aggies after losing to Appalachian State. And Miami, it was six. Now it's five. The first look I had at it, I have to tell you that I, I took the Canes to win in College Station. Wow. But the more I think about it is, how does 
the Aggies lose two in a row at Kyle Field. I don't think it's happened in 100 years. Uh, very difficult. I know the Aggies are going to need some better quarterback play than they've had uh, in the first couple of weeks, that's for sure. Arkansas, impressive again, 44-30 over South Carolina. Wake Forest, cover, cover. over Vandy, uh, 45-25. Penn State over Ohio, cover. cover for Penn State as well. How about Kansas, Scotty? I didn't have the stones to take them on the money line, but I had that 13 and a half uh, when they went to Morgantown and won outright in overtime against the Mountaineers. That didn't go well Jayhawks for me. are back. I'm sorry. I apologize. USC destroyed Stanford uh, in that game. It, a it actually should have been worse than 41-28. We mentioned the late night games. You had Eastern Kentucky win a seven overtime game against Bowling Green. How about the Holy Cross? Hail Mary. Oh, that to was beat great. Buffalo's guy. Did you like that kid on Holy Cross getting it done uh, at the end yeah. there? We always love to see uh, that. So there is uh, your highlights of the week in college football. Another week ready to go here. You mentioned it. Miami, Texas A&M. Uh, a very, very I gotta tell interesting you, game I, in college I, station. I got to yeah. tell you, Mike, I, I, I mean it when I say this. Like, Obviously, I make a lot more money off of college than I do pros. Yes. I think NFL football is the most brutal thing to bet on in the world yes. of any sport but i think I agree. the money to make is in college football that's where i make all the money the bread and butter is college pros suck it's torture The early line. I just feel like the Washington Commanders at a plus 152 price really are getting overlooked. I don't understand the hatred for Carson Wentz. Now let's not forget in 2017, which isn't 10 years ago, he was the single best player in the entire National Football League. The team is talented, Kevin. I know the defense might have been a little bit overhyped in the past, but it's still a solid overall bunch. You're not looking at the Washington Commanders and going, that team stinks on defense, they can't defend, because that's not the case. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Anyone who is drafting Jefferson over Cup, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I don't think I would do it. There's just so, It's like the McCaffrey thing. It's like there's just something in drafting the guy who just scored 400 points. Like, you should probably just do that again. And then even, even Chase as well. If Jamar Chase is one-on-one -on -one against a safety, he's coming down with that ball. He's knocking the safety to the ground, and he's scoring a touchdown. So for me, it's those three guys. The Sports Grid Network. A-Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The morning after. So we wanted to test the football knowledge of New Yorkers by identifying NFL team logos. I can't. The Patriots. No. Wait, 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 wait. This NFL team logo. Raiders. How'd you know? Because I can read. Hey, he can read. That's the, the Bulls, right? Close. Change one letter. The Rams? Who said you weren't good at it? That was great. I'm not good under pressure, but I am a big football fan. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game. Take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The 
Carr was our sports business and legal insider from Harvard on Sports Grid and exclusive on uh, Coast to Coast every week. And you hear him on Carver and Lisi as well on uh, Sports Grid Radio nationally on Sirius XM, Sports Map, Sports Byline, and Mightier 1090 in San Diego. So, uh, Rick, we'll start with this. We've already talked at great length about Dak's injury, but now things are evolving with the surgery that uh, there is some talk. Uh, late this afternoon that they are going to try to figure out what the answer is to this problem that they have, whether I don't believe for one minute Cooper Rush can handle this business for eight weeks. And there are opportunities out there in the marketplace. What do you think the Cowboys are going to do? Because if they don't uh, get a quarterback, Mike McCarthy should just run now, run now back to his big uh, pad in, in, in Wisconsin and live on the farm because he's going to get fired. Well, he may run now anyway, but uh, how about how about Colin Kaepernick? Now, he's he's got to be too old, so that, that might be an issue. Uh, we're going to go through all of the B-list quarterbacks around uh, football, and it's just amazing that uh, that happened uh, in a game that they had basically no chance of winning, that their receivers didn't give him a chance anyway. So the answer is, the good news is that the team, according to Forbes, is worth $8 billion at the beginning of the season. The bad news is they have no chance of winning. Scott Frost went 16 and 31 in Lincoln as the head coach of Nebraska. Now, if there were, uh, you know, like if, if Osborne was in a casket, he'd be turning in his casket, watching that guy coach. They had to fire him. I, I thought he, you know, was fireable last year. I can't believe he survived that. Then they bring him back. He loses that game. They should have won in Dublin. And then they go play a game, barely win that. And then they turn around and play and lose to Appalachian State, and he's fired. And they gave him $15 million to leave. Can you imagine getting fired, making $15 million golden parachute, and you're that bad? He's the worst coach I've ever seen. Well, kudos to his agent, by the way, because golden parachutes mean that you caught the opportunity when he had some leverage after the undefeated 2017 uh, C- Central Florida season and everybody wanting him and negotiated that golden parachute so everybody in lincoln is bemoaning the fact that that's too much money well the guy bargained for it and he got it the thing that i don't understand is they were so desperate to get rid of them you realize that they could have waited what about two and a half more weeks three and a half more weeks by then though your argument should be that's three more nebraska losses they didn't want to take the chance so how about the 20 million viewers that pop for the bills opening win yeah, uh, it's somewhere between the 25 million and the uh, the the 20. Uh, I guess it was one million. The home and home <laughs> that the Cowboys and the Buccaneers put on us the last couple of years. And look, 17.1 million on average last year for a regular NFL game. This wasn't a regular NFL game. 48 of the top 50 shows were NFL games last year. It's a huge juggernaut, and now we're getting bigger. I can't wait, by the way, for Thursday night because I'm going to look for some Amazon-related metrics to see who's watching and, more important, who's using the Amazon platform and say, hey, I like this. Let me sign up. I have it, so I'll be watching. Uh, I have to ask you, I think it's more important. The Serena stuff was huge. The ratings were huge. Millions of people watched. But what really turned me on about the U.S. Open was – I've said this to you before. I just think it's one of the greatest sporting events in the world. The U.S. Open for two weeks in New York. There is nothing that touches it. It destroys Wimbledon and the other ones. The French, not a, there's not an American on the face of the earth that cares about that French Open. And the Australian Open is even worse. But I saw that almost 800,000 fans went to Flushing to see it live. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and the economic impacts even more. And people don't understand because they like to think of it as a one-night thing. You've got 17 nights, basically, of record attendance. And when you look at economic impact, Super Bowl's great. We all love that. But that's one day, a weekend, but one day. And the World Series and everything else. And so it's got it going on even bigger. And remember what happens. The more money generated by the USTA, the more money going into youth player development. I think they've done a pretty darn good job of developing their male and female American tennis players for the future. I mean, uh, Tiafo was unbelievable. What a story right there. How about the Alabama-Texas game? The most streamed game numbers in history for Fox. Yeah, and a couple other things, too. 105,000 people that set a record for uh, Royal uh, Memorial Stadium. 
And of course, the uh, television numbers were significant as well. The other infamy infamy record is uh, uh, this is what. Saban's 17th season where he starts with two wins. Well, one is always a patsy. That's easy. But then the second one, he gets the guys up against guys who will always want to beat him. It's usually two walkovers. This was a walkover and a half. And they don't pass Georgia to be number one. doesn't really matter. At the end of the season, that's uh, who will decide number one. But it's good color until then. How about our Canes? Huh? How about our Canes? Yeah, believe me, I love the Canes more than my family, and I love them more than you. And uh, that's been proven I already. I'm willing to I steal, lie, cheat, murder, rape uh, for the Canes, as you know. And you're only willing to drive me while I commit all those crimes. You do not get involved in the actual committing of the crime. You just drive. Yeah, so but here's I my question. I am. I, that's the, the law. But why is what you just described any different than your normal behavior? It isn't. I'm a horrible person. But uh, the WNBA ratings were huge. Yeah, they were. About a million uh, people. That, that, that's a lot for women's basketball. When you watch it and pay careful attention, it's, it's really good. I don't want to be a sexist about it, but it really is stable. It is heading in the right direction. When you look at Connecticut and you look at the star power involved with that, and then you deal with Las Vegas and you deal with Chicago, uh, you have stability, NBA ownership, partially NBA arenas and you have a recipe for success. Good for them. What is the projections in New York for online betting uh, in October? I saw the numbers. They're staggering. Staggering. Some wags were saying it's less than the year before and it's not Uh, a billion mark for the second straight month. That's a big number, a billion. That's why all of these other states are saying, get out of my way. I want to go back to the legislature and pass it as quickly as we can. And remember, there was a big risk in New York because we thought the politicians were getting greedy by demanding 51 percent of the rake. (laughs) Yeah. You know, what's the line? Uh, The mafia didn't take 51 percent of the rake. But yet the bottom line is it doesn't affect anything because people are going to gamble and then they'll continue to gamble. And what does it mean? Hopefully money for teachers and infrastructure. Hold hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Rick, Rick, hold on. Mafia, you get 52 percent. Mafia says he gets fifty-two <laughs> percent. That's a different mafia. All right, Th- this is this is the, <laughs> this is the mafia that you don't want to cross. That other mafia, I could care less. All right, I could care less if I cross the guy. I was just going to get into the fact the biggest deal that the gambling allows is for his football team at Highmark Stadium or whatever the whatever the name's going to be, and it's the best. $1.4 billion stadium money can buy. Oh, now everybody's talking about Josh Allen. He's our hero. Wonderful. They're going to self-destruct. I guarantee you. Watch out, Carver. Oh, my Watch God. Out. Listen to this guy putting a hex on your bills. Can you believe this guy? And then you let him go on your radio show? I mean, Carver, hi, you got to cut that off. What is the deal? Is Disney and ESPN going to have a sports betting app? Yeah, and you know what's interesting about this? Uh, uh Capic, the guy who runs Disney, basically, and doesn't say things lightly, says, yeah, we're going to hold on to ESPN. And you know why? Even though it's losing money? Because of gambling. So we went from a fact that nobody could talk about odds to the savior of ESPN in Disney's eyes is the fact that there may be a gambling app. It's an amazing world. All right. So uh, real quick, do you uh, like the Canes chances in College Station? And how do you like the Dolphins chances in Baltimore after that great performance against the Pats? I hope they don't take it lightly. The uh, Look, perfect game. Uh, McDaniel outcoached Belichick. Belichick with one of those measly little handshakes at the end of the game. Uh, he deserves everything he gets. And the bottom line is Canes by four. Oh, 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 he's taking the canes. Ibis and my boys getting involved. Rick Hara. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College football today. Of Alabama and winning SEC 
champion. It's the Island of Misfit Toys. Fantasy Sports so, Today. You have to understand that. Where Can they survive those first four games? They two and two. Pro Football two. Today. To this franchise. They are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injury. This is a brutal rash. In-game live you all take access. Points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Bills 11 and a half, Colts 10 and a half, Ravens 10 and a half, Chiefs 10 and a half. The low team on the totem pole, Scotty, in the AFC, the Texans at four and a half. I think the Bills can win 14 games. What else matters? What do I care about all these teams that can't win five games? Uh, if you can't win five games, I'm not talking about you. How does that sound? And that's the way it's going. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. A majority of minor leaguers have backed the MLBPA to join the union. The Players Association has now formally asked Major League Baseball for voluntary recognition. A lot of people said that this was too big for the union. The union wanted to deal with major leaguers, not minor leaguers. That's not the case. This voluntary recognition is a big deal. And Major League Baseball will continue then to have more of an integrated system. The Sports Grid Network. football giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout 35-34? Raise your hands. Absolutely not. Come home. Back home to the birds. But again, the thing is, I know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're Eagles fans, but you out there know how talented this football team is. It absolutely could be their season. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. So Adam Kaplan, our NFL insider, was dancing around in his uh, briefs last night when uh, Dak Prescott injured his thumb, knowing that the Eagles would win the East and that uh, his over uh, bet would hit on the Eagles for the season. And he's actually, look at him. He's he's like gloating in it. Look at him. Oh, he's got on, the shine. He's got the cowboy injury shine. Are you happy that uh, T.J. Watt tore his pack and – and that Harris hurt his foot. And my Steelers are in trouble. But how about that Pittsburgh win in Cincinnati? Unbelievable. I got to give you credit there for that one. That was just, that was an unbelievable game. The game should not have been as close as it was. Now, Watt getting hurt late in the game obviously was part of that. But that was, I mean, I don't know if it's a game of the week. It's certainly one of the top three games. But it should not have been as close as it was. But their defense was so phenomenal. It just it was amazing how tough. They were on Burrow. He could not do anything right, but he hung in there and certainly an amazing game. But it, it was certainly, look, we, we talked about this on Friday. Week one is crazy. Things happen, you go, wait a minute, that should not have happened. And the things that you expect to happen, happen. It, it, it's just a, it's the wild and wool. We got some injuries, which we're going to get to. And none bigger than the Dak Prescott injury. That's a shame that they lost him uh, due to his broken thumb. And it's, he's not the only one, by the way, that got hurt in that game. I mean, uh, there were injuries all over the league. Uh, Godwin's injured again. We'll get into all that. All right. What are the Cowboys going to do about this? They cannot go to the well with Cooper Rush. I mean, this is, you know, I thought the Browns would beat the Panthers with Jacoby Brissett. And I think he can handle the job. I do not believe that Cooper Rush can win with the Cowboys. 
Well, here here's the thing, okay, with Cooper Rush. I remember talking to the Vikings last year prior to their game. Uh, it was a Sunday night game, I think, in week eight. And they, they give me, like, a scouting report on it and on the player. And they go, hey, you know, he's functional. If we get to him, he'll have no chance. Well, here's the crazy thing. They never got to Cooper Rush last, in that game last week eight and right. last season. It was unbelievable. Rush could no do, do no wrong. 24 for 40, 325, two touchdowns. He did turn it over twice, but – he made several big time throws. That was a huge game. That really, to me, sunk the Vikings season. They lost so much confidence losing at home to Cooper Rush and the Cowboys as he filmed for Prescott. But you're right. Look, there's a saying around coaches around the National Football League when it comes to backup quarterbacks. The longer they play, the more they look like backups. Two, three, maybe four games you get away with it. But the longer they play, the more they look like backups. And the funny thing with the Cowboys, Pharrell, is they don't even have another quarterback on the roster. Dak will go into injured reserve. And then Cooper Rush will be the starter, and they're going to have to add at least one more quarterback, if not another. But th- this crushes them. And then J. Ron Curse. J. Ron Curse is a safety that used to be with the Vikings. He's one of the tallest safeties in the National Football League at six foot four. He's the guy who covers the opponent's tight end. He's great at it. This guy revived his career after the Vikings didn't want him back. He's really good. He's going to be missed some time with a knee injury. Connor McGovern, their left guard, probably will miss some time with an ankle injury. This was tough. I mean, yes, your Steelers suffered two big injuries, one in particular that's going to be a while uh, with Watt, but this is crushing. And, you know, it's amazing how Las Vegas had the Cowboys still even leading up to week one as the clear favorite in the NFC East. Now they are plus 600 to win the NFC East and the team least likely by their odds. It's, it's kind of funny how that works out. Well, I mean, they look terrible even with him. They did. And the Bucks defense, they brought it. Because we talked Friday about Tyler Smith. Yes, he didn't play great. But the interior of their offensive line gave him a ton of pressure. They're in major trouble. Even if Jason Peters winds up starting soon at left tackle, it's not going to make a difference. Their off- offensive line is not as good. They're not going to have Prescott for a while. They don't have Michael Gallup. They traded Amari Cooper to the Browns. This team is in total transition here. And this puts Mike McCarthy squarely on the hot seat. Oh, my God. Mike McCarthy, if I were him, I'd call my agent and tell him I got a, 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 need a heart murmur. Uh, I need a, I need to go get medical attention. I, I got to get out of here. I, I'm, he's doomed. He's absolutely doomed. They're already blaming him. Now, let's talk about Pittsburgh's losses. Uh, the, Harris really concerns me because I already knew when he, when he was walking off the field, Watt saying, I tore my pec, I tore my pec, I tore my pec to anyone that would listen. He knows that he tore his back. Now they're talking today like second, third opinions, and maybe he'll come back in a month. I don't believe any of that. Yesterday, I knew they lost him for the season. The one that I'm worried about is Harris, because if they lose him, honestly, their offense is bad enough. Uh, you know, he was a 1,200-yard guy last year. They can't afford to lose Harris. That was a huge win. Minka was the defensive player of the week in the NFL with the pick six, Izzy, and the blocked extra point at the end of the game. But to lose those two guys, I mean, you talk about screwed. They're screwed. Yeah, now Harris is more of an ankle than a foot injury, and they don't have good depth at running back. The kid Jalen Warren, the undrafted free agent out of Oklahoma State, is going to have to play a bigger role, particularly in third downs until Harris is ready to go. They're going to continue to evaluate his injury. But, you know, what? the hope here is if it's a partial tear, you're looking at eight weeks. Uh, we've seen players with a partial pectoral tear come back in season. If, he's, if it's a full tear, he's done for the, at least the regular season. So, yeah. Now, Malik Reed, here's an interesting guy. Malik Reed, they acquired from a trade from Denver uh, prior to the season starting. They got him in August. He's actually pretty good. He had a career year in, in 2020. He had eight sacks, over 50 tackles combined. Not a bad player. You like him more as your third outside linebacker. Now he'll have to start. This is devastating. You're right. Boy, they play great defense. This, this game yesterday, Pharrell, their defense might have been the best defense they've played in almost two years. They were incredible. They were everywhere. Uh, what a great job that uh, Terrell Austin, their, their new defense coordinator, did a phenomenal job of, of, of calling. Don't forget Brian Flores is a part of that staff. Boy, they did a phenomenal job. It's going to be really hard here. I'm glad that Mike Tomlin has a veteran staff on defense because they're, they're going to need to pull on the resources here. This is going to be really, really, really difficult. You know, offensively now, more pressure now on Mitch Trubisky. He was okay, but he needs to be better going forward. He won, and that pass to Fryermuth uh, in that last drive, and that pass to Johnson, that great grab by Johnson. I don't care what you say, Trubisky, Carver High said it best. Guy always finds a, a way to win. He wins.
He won in Chicago with a crappy team. He didn't look good yesterday. And uh, when he was taking the shower, he probably said, <laughs> I still won. No, no doubt. But the guy who did not look good and his team was terrible for all offense. Well, him too, Joe Burrow. But you know, he brought the team back. But Aaron Rodgers, Pharrell, what a struggle oh. in Minneapolis yesterday. Oh, what a shame. I, I just feel so bad for him with all of his multiple MVPs and the hype he gets and the attention he gets and the national media he gets. Uh, like he's the only player in the league. All they ever talk about is, uh, you know, Brady and, and Rodgers. And yesterday, uh, so much for that uh, North Dakota State receiver that dropped a oh. wide open touchdown bomb. And your boy Doobie, he might as well go smoke Doobies because he didn't do anything either. Yeah, so here's the thing. Two other top three receivers are rookies. You mentioned Christian Watson, who dropped a 75 surefire touchdown. He ran right by Patrick Peterson. Horrible. Rodgers threw, threw a dime, and he just flat out dropped it. You know, Remember, he missed all training camp due to knee surgery. And Romeo Dobbs, their fourth-round pick, yeah, look, he had to play a lot. So did Watson. They don't have much of a choice. They don't have any very good depth. Alan Lazard got hurt last week in practice with an ankle injury. He didn't play. So these two young kids are going to play. And look, Rogers got to make these guys better. And, and he talked about it, how, look, he knows mistakes are going to happen, but there were too many mistakes. That they got to clean these things up. When you have a, a young receiver core, you have to help them build confidence. And he's got to grow with these guys. It's not like it's not like Rogers is retiring after the season. He's not. He signed a multi-year deal. He's going to be here for a while. And look, the, the, the fact of the matter is they're still favored to win that division. It was a tough loss. Their defense was okay, but their offense was terrible. And the other thing is they got to get Aaron, Aaron Jones, their star running back to football. Less than 10 touches is not going to work. But this young receiver core, we talked about this last week, very raw, talented, but they got to get these guys going. That's going to be a problem as, as we watch this team going forward here. You know, Minnesota was sort of like the trendy pick by the odds and also to be maybe a wild card of the NFC. They're, they have a brand new defense. Per Cousins played well. You got to see how this this does here. This thirty four front, but I think it's more yesterday the 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 inexperience of that the, the, those young receivers at wide receiver there. The talent level is there, but they're so inexperienced. It showed in that game. Yeah, and listen, uh, Jefferson humiliated everyone on oh, the football field, and, and I they were my sleeper team along with the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, for me, it was more about what the Dolphins did and not what. Uh, the, you know, judge and Patricia factor. For me, the Patriots didn't do anything right the whole day. It was that McDaniel did a great job. I thought Waddle was great. Hill was great. I thought their defense just absolutely attacked Jones. Malachi crunched him, hurt his back, scoop six, a fumble touchdown, hizzy. I thought the Dolphins were the story, not, not the Pats play calling. And by the way, w with the Dolphins, watch, you mentioned Jalen Waddell. This is a brand new offense. This is an old school West Coast offense about running after the catch. Mike right. McDaniel was joking with Waddell saying that, oh, you're going to, are you going to get over 10 yards to catch this season? Because last year he didn't, despite having over 100 receptions. But that's exactly what he did on that touchdown pass down the seam. Great throw by Tua, getting it out of his hands quickly so he could play that point guard at, at quarterback. He did a great job. But Boy, the Patriot offense was totally inept. Yeah, they got to the red zone one time. They did score there, uh, but no explosive plays. As the team source told me, keep in mind, he says, look, it's going to take us a while to get this thing right. They still have confidence in Patricia. But Bill, Chuck, Bill Belichick will get more involved more involved and more involved, as he did in 2009 when Josh McDaniels became the Broncos head coach and Bill Bryan called the plays. He's going to have to. He doesn't have a choice here. That was absolutely brutal yesterday, but good of you to say that the Dolphins defense played well. They absolutely did. All right, uh, Broncos and Seahawks tonight. Yeah. Almost 90% of the bets are on the Broncos on the uh, spread and money line. That's always a bad sign. Real quick, who do you like in the game? Blowout City. I was I, I, I got three picks right over the weekend. One, I missed one with the Rams, but the Broncos will beat up Seahawks tonight. Yeah. All right, there he is, Adam Kaplan. Be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play 
Learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. You look at the Green Bay side of things, Ben, and it's actually incredible what Matt LaFleur has been doing with this team in the regular season. Three straight seasons with 13 wins. So I don't know why anybody would be taking the 10 and a half, and a half number on them with the minus 160 juice when you can go to an alt line of 11 and a half and get plus money on it immediately. And if you really think the Packers are going to win this division and, and the Vikings don't get, you know, nine or 10 wins, um, then I think that's the number that you got to look. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I got the Denver Broncos oh. winning the Super Bowl this year. Yes, it's year one for Russell Wilson in Denver. It was year one for Matthew Stafford in L.A. The offensive line is solid. It's not gangbusters, but it is solid. Let Russ cook. And the weapons are there to cook. What about the idea that whoever wins this division is going to need 12 wins, maybe 13 wins, which gives you a legitimate chance if you're high on one of these teams to maybe be the number Only one seed. on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow. And we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. Okay. Watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Is betting in trouble revenue-wise in Colorado? Well, all the naysayers were saying, look, the shine is off the rose, whatever metaphor you want to use, the revenues aren't there. They had summer reports that were incredibly low. But look, after the Avalanche and the Stanley Cup and with baseball flaming out with the Rockies, there wasn't a whole lot to bet on in the summer. And now that even preseason is back, take a look at the numbers. Over $300 million again and up about 17%. And everybody seems to think that things are right, especially heading into the lion's share of the football season. And this is the most important thing in Colorado. There was only $200,000 in one month for the state's water implementation fund. They need water. Money was going to go to that. Over a million last month and more to come. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Sports News Minute. I got to tell you, if you don't have the BetMGM app, you're going to get it now, aren't you? Look at this. I'm going to give you a risk-free bet of up to a thousand flambitos. A thousand bucks risk-free is yours. All you got to do is put in the bonus code coast to coast with the number two coast, the number two coast, coast to coast. That's all you got to do. Bonus code coast to coast. You get a risk-free bet of up to a thousand dollars on the bet MGM app. Get it now. What are you waiting for? There you go. Uh, run out and get it done. All right. We have done football, Scotty, uh, pretty much the entire coast to coast today, as we should. But there is baseball tonight. So we've got some tickets to win there. And there was some baseball over the weekend. Let me give you a couple of the important points. The Cardinals beat the Pirates 4-3 to three yesterday. But more important than that, Albert Pujols hit 696 on Saturday. And then yesterday, Scotty hit 697 to yep. not only get three within 700, put him alone third all time, also to give the Cardinals the lead on KMOX in St. Louis. And now it's Albert Pujols with a chance to tie this game or maybe even better than that, give the Cardinals the lead. The young deals. Pujols swings and lifts a high fly ball. That's it deep. Center field. It might go. It's a gunner. It's a gunner for Pujols. He gives the Cardinals the lead in the ninth inning with home run six, nine, seven, all alone in fourth place in Major League Baseball history. 
Yeah, I mean, this guy, he's going to get it. I'm telling you, he's going to hit three in these last uh, two and a half, three weeks, as sure as I'm sitting here. He's been just hitting one every two or three days for a month now. He, he just bound and determined. He'll play like he isn't, but he wants 700. He don't get it. Yep, uh, he's got himself three and a half weeks to get three home runs. Uh, we are hoping that we can get there because we got that over 699 and a half at a really big price. Uh, the Mariners, Scotty, having themselves a good weekend against the Braves. couple of comeback wins, including yesterday. Julio Rodriguez tied it. Eugenio Suarez wins it on Root Sports with the Soul Man going nuts. Here we go. Soul Man. 1-1, one, one, did you know? Something unbelievably special. I mean, unbelievable. Gotta love it. And yeah, Gino, good vibes only. My man. I gotta tell you, uh, when I saw the final of that game, I said to myself out loud, I'm like, good luck playing them in the playoffs in Seattle. Yeah. I mean, they just don't lose there. I mean, that, that's it. They, they beat everybody. The Braves, it doesn't matter who go, the Yankees go in there and lose. Everybody loses. You go there, you lose. That's what happens. They got a little bit of, and I, and I know it's hard to, like, equate this, and it's it's hard to measure this. Like, they got a little something special with them this Moxie. year. Like, there's a little, there's a little magic uh, with that Mariner team. That's going to be scary. I, I think for both, not just the Yankees, who we've talked about a lot, I think even Houston – I think that could be a tough challenge for Houston as well, Scotty, in a five-game or a seven-game series with the way that they hit and the way that they get clutch uh, uh, pitting, uh, pitching, that's for sure. Uh, so with the Braves losing two out of three, Mets beat the Marlins two out of three this weekend. They won yesterday nine to three. So going into this week, Scotty, the Mets have a one-and-a-half game lead on the Braves. And, that, I mean, it's been back and forth. The Braves did get it even with them for, I believe it was on Friday for a little bit. Mets were able to push back ahead. I mean, they've basically both played. I think I saw it today. It was like one of them, one's 32 and 15. The other one's 33 and 16. They've both been good over right. the last. The Braves never lose. Neither of them lose. Well, the, the, you know, Braves caught them, went up by a half game, yeah. and the next day they lost it. And then they lost another one on Sunday. And, uh, you know, the Mets were winning. And so that's why it's at one and a half now. So these last three weeks are going to be crazy. And I know they play each other, I think. Uh, so yeah. uh, it's as good as it gets. But I'm telling you, you know, those two teams are very dangerous. And, and as we said earlier, Seattle is someone you just do not want to play. If you get hooked up with Seattle in the playoffs, uh, I say right now, here and now, you're losing. You're going to go out there and lose, and that'll be the end of it. It was a surprisingly good weekend for the Yankees, Scotty. After losing to the Rays on Friday night, it I looked like it. there was it looked like there was a chance that the Rays were going to maybe get to within the, tying them in the loss column. But the Yankees blow them out Saturday, blow them out Sunday, ten to four yesterday. They end up taking two out of three. The cushion. Back to five and a half over the Rays and six over the Blue Jays. They needed that badly both days, scoring in double figures. Yeah, and wasn't Saturday they scored seven runs in the first inning? Is that what it was? Yeah. And uh, yeah. everybody was yeah. in on it. They had like seven straight hits or something like that, and they were you know coming across the plate in droves. And then Sunday they backed it up. Uh, you talk about needing it, and Stanton was hitting home runs as well. And just yeah. you know, not even five days ago he shot that ball off his ankle, and you thought. Here we go again with this guy. He's missed more games than anyone I've ever seen that played for the Yankees. Uh, Red Sox beat the Orioles 1-0 yesterday. They took two out of three. Orioles, despite the great couple of months, starting to fade in that American League wildcard race. Phillies swept the Nationals over the weekend. They won 7-5 yesterday. You sent me that story that they're going to go after Bogarts. Who don't the Phillies sign? Like every year, 
Harper, uh, they, every year, Real Muto, the, uh, the other, uh, what's the guy in left field that we bet all the time that was on the Reds last year? They, uh, yeah, Schwarbaum Castellanos. too, Castellanos, thank you, is who I was thinking of. Every year, the Phillies go shopping. They got to win once in a while, Scotty. <laughs> hey, they're a <laughs> playoff the team, and, and they're dangerous, too. They're fun to watch, and they're fun to bet on. They, they win bets, and that's all there is to it. Brewers beat the Reds 7-6 yesterday. They're within two of the Padres for that final wild card spot in the National League. Guardians swept the Twins Huge. over the weekend, Scotty. A 4-1 win yesterday. The Twins are now four and a half back of the Guardians in that American League Central. The White Sox took three out of four at the ashtray against the A's. So that leaves the White Sox two and a half back and the Twins four and a half back. LaRusso was cleared to travel with the team. He's got a pacemaker procedure. He doesn't want to be a distraction. We'll pass on the skipper, Scotty, because we got to get to tonight's games. But White Sox showing a little bit of – they've actually played better. Nothing against Tony. They've played better since LaRusso wasn't there, to be quite honest with you. Well, I think he's getting fired either way, and I think that his uh, exit strategy is the pacemaker. You, you got that? You can ride that excuse yeah. right into retirement. Yeah. that That's a nice way to make it seem – we listen, we're not throwing you know, Tony Remember that out. day he's he was falling asleep? Issue. Remember he was yeah, falling asleep in the dugout? Was, Maybe that, that, that pacemaker, he would have gotten scene. a little jolt. He would have been right up. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough scene for Tony. Uh, I would just let, uh, let let it ride out the rest of the year. No, no problem there. The Dodgers beat the Padres 11-2. First team to clinch a playoff spot is the Dodgers, who are going to go well over 100 wins. They beat everybody up every single Well, game. I guess they didn't LA. clinch after all. They got to they gotta win one more. They do have to win. Okay, there you go. So they got to win one more in order to clinch that. Uh, they're at 96 and 43 right now. Uh, so well, they said they okay. clinched yesterday, but they didn't. And so they partied, the, and it didn't matter. They're going to win it anyway. That's a done deal. So it's just a stupid story. Who cares? L.A. Times owner is considering buying the Angels. He's only worth $6.9 billion, Scotty. Uh, so that might work out well for them. There. That's almost $7 billion. Oh, <laughs> uh, geez. I mean, all these billionaires getting involved in Major League Baseball now. Going to be a lot of money in the game, that's for sure. Although Moreno had plenty of money, and you know what that did for them? Absolutely nothing. All right, we have games tonight. Let's go. Those angels we were just talking about, they are in Cleveland. Detmers is on the mound for them. Pilkington goes for the Guardians uh, tonight, Sky. That game actually starts in about 40 minutes. Guardians minus 115, Angels minus 105, total of eight. Yeah, the Guardians are hot. I'm on the Guardians all night, every way, every which way, but loose. Give me Cleveland. Keep winning. Framber Valdez goes for the Astros tonight. Eduardo Rodriguez for the Tigers in Detroit. Heavy lumber uh, for the Astros, minus 225, the road favorite, plus a buck 85 for the Tigers, flat seven the total. I mean, the Astros are going to have to eat greenies, uppers, just to get through this one, uh, this series in Detroit. They don't even want to be there. They don't want to play. But I would say Astros easy, lay the run and a half. Plenty of tickets available in Cincinnati tonight. The Buckos and the Reds, Mr. Wilson and Miner, the starting pitchers, minus 135 for Cincinnati, total of nine at Great America. Well, these two teams are so awful. It should be a great game. Give me the Reds. <laughs> That's usually what happens, as we like to talk about all the time. Tampa opens a series in Toronto against the Jays, both teams looking towards the playoffs. Berrios gets the ball for Toronto. Uh, Chriswell is starting for the Rays tonight, who are plus 140. Jays minus 165, total eight and a half. If Cooper Chriswell beats the Blue Jays at Rogers Center in Toronto, I will keel over. Give me Berrios. Give me the Jays. I'm all over them, minus a buck and a half. The Bassett Hound on the mound for the Mets tonight at City Field against the Cubbies who have a sod going. Minus 300 for the Mets, plus 240 for the Cubs, total of eight. Mets, lay the run and a half, and uh, easy money tonight. I, I just can't see it. It's all, all New York. We have the second game of the doubleheader in South Don't Beach, even get Miami. Me. Don't even get me Rangers started. At the Marlins. I, I, no Rangers comments. have John Gray tonight, minus 125. Texas. The total is seven. We're going with Texas. Texas. I lost money today on the Marlins. Thanks so much. I blame oh. Kim Ng. Tyler, 
Tyler Anderson. They walked in a run in the eighth. That that did it. They, uh, they walked in the run that lo- lost the game. I'm going to puke. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tyler done Anderson with the Marlins. The I hope the fish smell. Tyler Anderson for the Dodgers tonight in the desert uh, against the Diamondbacks. Nelson is going for them. Dodgers minus 225, plus a buck 80 for Arizona, total of nine. Again, Dodgers roll. I'd lay a run and a half. I'm all over L.A. And finally, Atlanta finishing off what seems like a three-week trip on the West Coast. They have been everywhere. Uh, They have Spencer Strider tonight in San Francisco against Alex Cobb. Braves minus 185, Giants plus a buck 50. Six and a half the total tonight. Yeah, I'm on uh, Strider and the Braves uh, to win on the money line. I like a minus a run and a half at minus a buck five to beat Cobb at Oracle. Uh, some good news for you. There is your night in baseball, by the way. All the tickets. Uh, we gave you the props earlier. Let's have a good night. Some good news to take you out on Coast to Coast today, Scotty. This coming from Schefter right now. Test today on Steelers running back Najee Harris's foot came back negative, and there is a belief that, according to a source, he should be good to go Sunday against the Patriots. Suddenly he's playing this week? Now Harris is in the mix for the Steelers at home against New England. Yeah, I just uh, sold my uh, tickets to that game, and I'm going to sell my tickets to every game this year, thanks to my scheduling. Uh, But uh, it is what it is. I like the Steelers, again, uh, to beat the Patriots. The Patriots look like crap. The Steelers look tough to me. But I think truly this is where we're going to find out whether Tua is the guy in Miami. And obviously there's a guy named Lamar Jackson that's sort of now waiting in the wings to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. As bizarre as it was, it was Superman realizing that he's Clark Kent and he walks the earth with, earth with other humans. So um, I don't make too much of it. I think Anthony Joshua now has to embark on a new path for his career. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Kyler Murray is one of these players to me that if you acquired Kirk Cousins and a wide receiver for Kyler Murray, that's pretty good. At the end of the day, I think there's going to be some ups and downs, and I think there's still a lot of uncertainty of the stability of this Cardinals offense. And if Hopkins doesn't come back for six weeks, we don't have Rondell Moore, and Marquise Brown is the go-to guy, I don't know what becomes of Kyler Murray's value. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Green Bay's got bigger issues than that. Not only do they have young wide receivers, their number one Alan Lazard out. Tanya coming back from an ACL, their tight end is not near 100%. And the book in tackles, David Bakhtiari, this is almost two years, he's barely played. Elton Jenkins coming back from the ACL. They've both been limited in practice. And even if they play, you know, their scores are lower there on offense. And so it's not just Lazard. The Sports Grid Network. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. 
It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Fast forward for all in your page from the for all finish. No stories of murder, rape, or drownings, or people being eaten by sharks today, Carver High. Very disappointing. It just wasn't in the cards. Jemaya beats Kevin Holland by a first round submission. That was uneventful. Nate Diaz kicked Tony Ferguson's ass. Fourth round submission. Rear naked choke. Switek wins the women's championship at the U.S. Open. Our boy Alcatraz won the men's title. The U.S. Open sets an attendance record, as I said to Haro, 776,000 fans over two weeks. NBA team's uh, salary cap could jump to $134 million as soon as 23-24. The NBA in-season tournament Carver High could also start as early as 23-24. They're going to have a mid-season like, championship. They're going to have like first half titleist. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I've never heard of such a stupid idea. Steph Curry says the Warriors absolutely considered bringing Durant back. So why didn't you, man? The Avs signed former Penguin Evan Rodriguez. Very uneventful. Evan Rodriguez. Very uneventful. The Habs make Nick Suzuki their 31st captain in Habitant history, Carver. Kyle Busch leaving Joe Gibbs for Richard Childress racing after 15 years at Gibbs. And I'm the only person that mentioned that anywhere today of any significance, <laughs> that no one cares at all what happens. I didn't even know they were still racing. Do they still race NASCAR events? They do? Uh, I, I think that they're still going, yes. Uh, I know that the PGA's 22-23 season starts this week with the Fortinet Championship coming Wait, up. Wait, it just PGA's ended a week back. ago at Eastlake, and they start up? We're back, baby. Let's go. I don't know where that what tournament is. Somewhere out west. Is. Let's go. Can they, can they give them a month or two off? We got the President's Cup next year. week. President's Cup next week at Quail Hollow. Hey, GTD is next. Get all my in-game plays at ForAllInEvents.com. See you tomorrow on Coast to Coast.